Max with Height here. Today we're gonna to walk you through how to set up the Q60 using the Height Nexus software. If you haven't installed your Q60 yet and need help, watch the Q60 hardware installation video, link in the description below. For this video, we're gonna show you how to download and install Nexus, the system widgets, the Q60 faces, as well as cooling configuration. The first step is going to be opening up your web browser and navigating to height.com slash Nexus. Here, you'll be taken to our Nexus landing page, and at the very top of the page, you'll notice a blue button that says Download Nexus. Go and click that button, and that'll get you the latest version of Nexus software for your system. Once you have that downloaded, go ahead and run the installer. It's going to take a second to warm up and initialize. Once it asks you for permission, go ahead and click yes. Next, go ahead and click I agree. Now it's going to ask if you want to install for all users on the computer or just for the user that's currently logged in. For now, I'm just going to go with the currently logged in user and let it do its thing. Once it's done, it's going to ask you if you want to run Height Nexus. We'll keep that checkbox marked and go and click finish. It's going to ask you one more time for permission. Go ahead and click yes. Congratulations, you have successfully installed the software. Now you're going to be met with the onboarding experience we've designed for Nexus. The first screen is going to ask if you want to log in with your Hide account, register for a Hide account, or if you want to continue as guest for this tutorial. We're just going to continue as guest. Now it's going to ask you for performance tuning parameters. And so we have three sliders here for you to choose from. The first is going to control your widget data polling rate. And so this is how often Nexus communicates with all the various sensors and hardware attached to your system. The second is going to be the output resolution. This is going to be the resolution of RGB that's streamed to your connected devices. The last one is going to be the RGB streaming frame rate. All of these are optimized defaults, but you are free to tune them however you wish according to your system specifications. We're just going to hit next for now. And lastly, it's going to ask you if you want to enable video backgrounds. Keep in mind that they do look great. However, depending on computer specifications, they could have an impact on performance in some cases. For this tutorial, we're just going to leave it on and go ahead and click finish. At this point, you have completed your onboarding phase of Nexus software and you'll be met with a change log automatically. It's going to tell you everything that's new in this current version of Nexus that you've installed. If you scroll down to the very bottom of that tab, you can see that it has links to report bugs and give suggestions. That way, if you see something wrong with Nexus or you have an idea for improvement or enhancement you'd like to see, you can tell our developer team directly from there. There's also a link to join our Discord. This will let you get access to beta builds of Nexus that are updated much more frequently and you can be a lot more involved in the community and development of Nexus going forward. Once you click that sounds good button, that's going to be it for the onboarding experience. Next, we're going to be taking a look at how to actually set up your thick Q60 that you just installed into your system with Nexus software. So the first thing you want to do after you finish the onboarding experience is click on the Faces widget. Because I have a Y70 Touch as my case, it's going to prompt me to the Y70 page first. But for our intents and purposes, go ahead and click on the Q60 tile to the right. It's going to take a second, detect your Q60, download the latest features, and install the required packages. So give it a few seconds and it's going to finalize setup and take you to your Q60 Faces. Once Nexus is finished setting Setting up your Q60, you should be met with this screen within the Faces app, which will show you all the available faces and widgets to choose from. Now we are almost done completing the Q60 setup. The last phase is going to be going to your settings widget, clicking on the Q60 and making sure you have the latest firmware version. Now, as of recording this video, the latest firmware is 1.0.6.1. However, if there was a newer version of firmware available, there would be a blue update button to the right of that number. So in this case, we're up to date. But in case you see that blue button, please be sure to update your firmware to make sure you have the latest features and capabilities that the Q60 is capable of providing. Now we're going to be taking a deep dive into how you can fully customize your Q60 LCD using Height Nexus software. So the first thing you want to do is launch the Faces widget. Make sure you tab into the Q60 section. On the far left, you can switch between foreground and background customization, as well as accessing additional settings for the Q60 itself. On the left side of the panel, you're going to have a live preview of what your Q60 LCD is currently showing. If you hover over it, you can edit the current face that it's displaying. And then on the bottom, you have navigation controls for adding additional faces and cycling through the different ones you already have set. Here in the main window, you have the Faces tab, which has the five different faces you currently have to customize with. You have the theme section where you can change the text color, accent color, overlay color, foreground capacity, and overlay opacity to fully customize the color and theme of all these faces. As for the faces themselves, the very first is the clock face. Let's go ahead and edit that existing one here to show you the options. You have a digital face to choose from, an analog face to choose from, as well as a gradient. And then for the digital, you can also enable and disable the bouncing of the text with every second. Let's go back to the gradient. Next, we have the performance face. 
So let's go ahead and click the add button. As you can see, we added a different face here. It's also updated the amount of faces here on the bottom of the navigation panel. Now, you can pick practically any sensor that Nexus can pull from and show that on the LCD. This comes from your CPU, GPU, RAM, SSDs, motherboard, and Q60. So let's say we go to our CPU and we want the CPU temperature, so we select that sensor. We can enable and disable the showing of the hardware name itself up top. So here you can see it actually shows what CPU I'm running. It's going to turn that off, and then you can also toggle the sensor name. So let's say you don't want it to say CPU there, you just want the temperature. You can toggle that off and it'll center just the temperature that it wants to show. Let's go and toggle that back on so we know what we're looking at. And then there's a few different visual styles to choose from. There's the text, there's a water level, cat dog, void level, and caterpillar. There's more designs that are coming soon, but if you have any suggestions you'd like to see, feel free to hop into our community discord and chat directly with our developers. Next, we have the weather widget. Here you can pick your location, change your display units, as well as show various information on the screen itself. So let's go ahead and say we're in Los Angeles, which is where Height HQ is located. Click on that and boom, it automatically updates the location based off of our weather API. Let's change it to Fahrenheit since we like our weather temperatures and freedom units around here. You can change and enable and disable the condition showing in the background so you could go back to your Nexus background or the overlay with the weather widget. You can toggle showing the date and time at the very top of the screen, and you can also turn the location on and off at the bottom of the display. Next up, we have the screen time widget. The screen time widget is essentially going to keep track of how long you've spent in apps that have launched since the last boot cycle of your PC. And so whatever app is currently in focus, it's going to tell you how long you've spent using that app since your last reboot. Lastly, we have the media widget. And so here you can add it and choose between two different cover styles. The first is going to center the album art and then show you the song as well as the artist down below. And then the second option is actually going to fill the entire foreground with the album of whatever you're playing and then simply show you the details at the bottom. Now let's move on to the background customization here. There's three tabs to choose from. First is going to be the gallery tab, and here you can choose and select from the default video backgrounds that Nexus ships with. These are all the same across both the Q60 and Y70 UI and the Nexus software itself. You can choose a custom background from a variety of file formats with essentially unlimited runtime as long as the size and length can fit in your system RAM. Next, you also have a setting for kaleidoscope, so if you have different images selected, you can have them form a kaleidoscope and zoom in and zoom out on the LCD with complete speed control over there. If you want multiple pieces of media playing, you can actually cycle through them and set the interval that it cycles through with multiple media options. As for the lighting, currently the background is set to match my lighting sync, but let's say I want to add an effect overlay in the background instead. There's the fish option, which will animate a little fish across the screen in the background. There's the vortex option, which will create a nice little vortex effect. There's the holes option, which is going to mimic your lighting, but essentially create different circles around the background. There's a swirl option, which is going to twist and turn with the colors that are sampled from your lighting widget. And then lastly, there is the bubbles option, which shows different liquids flowing through behind the text and the foreground with the colors from your lighting widget. You could also set it to match the background media. And so you have three options here to choose from. You have media colors, which is going to sample colors from whatever album or cover art there is in the media being played. You have living media, which is going to play live visuals of that media on the background of your LCD. And finally, you have media kaleidoscope, which essentially takes the cover image of that media and turns it into a kaleidoscope like we talked about in the gallery effect. So for now, let's go back here and lastly, take a look at the settings options for Q60. Here, you have control of the display brightness itself. There's a slider that goes from 0 to 100, and then you also have your hardware mode display settings. This is going to be the images, videos, and GIFs that are saved directly onto the Q60. So when Nexus isn't running, you're Q60 LCD is still playing back exactly what you want. Here, you can also set the media interval so you can cycle through from a few seconds to 30 minutes. And then you also have text you can overlay down at the bottom. Under miscellaneous settings, you also have the ability to restart your display as well as reset the display in case you need to for troubleshooting purposes. Now we're going to take a look at how you can customize and control the cooling aspect of the Q60. This is in regards to both the dual harmonic pumps inside the radiator and the two thick FP12 fans that are mounted on it. Now, because the Q60 is a Nexus Link primary node, this also allows it to control your entire system's cooling through this widget. So let's take a look at that, shall we? Once we go into the cooling widget, we're going to be met with this screen, and it's split into three columns. On the left side, you have your inputs column. In the middle, you have your curves column, and on the right side, you have your outputs column. This lays the fundamental groundwork for what we like to call intelligent dynamic airflow. Allow me to explain. In the input section, you're going to be able to select from any sensor that Nexus is able to tap into. 
whether it be your CPU load temps, clock speeds, power, your GPU load temps, clock speeds, and power, your motherboard temps, as well as your thick Q60 pump temps for pump in and pump out, as well as any fan and the thermistor on that fan attached to thick Q60. Then you can set that to any one of the preset curves or create your own at the bottom. You can create a new graph curve where you can select each point, a new linear curve where you can select three points that's automatically going to manage the curves for you, or a flat curve, which lets you set a static percentage for the corresponding RPM and map any one of those to an available vector for the output, such as your case or radiator fans or the pump speed itself. So let's go through a practical example. Let's say I want to use my CPU temperature as the corresponding metric that my curve responds to. So I click on this little icon here and then I drag it to the performance pumps because I want the pumps to respond to the CPU temperature in this case. As you can see by expanding this performance pumps graph, I can see the exact points on the curve. I can even adjust the response time. What does response time mean? Well, modern CPUs often experience what we call spikes, a quick rise in temperature and clock speed to accomplish a certain task. And just as quickly as it ramps up, it ramps right back down and a lot of coolers that aren't as smart as the Q60 will quickly ramp up your fans and ramp them back down. This causes an audible whirring and humming every time that your CPU ramps up to accomplish a task, which can get quite annoying. So this response time curve adjustment is designed to alleviate exactly that. Now, it's going to wait for a period of five seconds. If the temperature is still high, then it's going to kick the fans on. Otherwise, it's going to ignore that spike. Just another quality of life improvement for our users out there. Now, let's say I want to map this to the pumps, right? So I then click on this end of the curve and map that to the dual harmonic pumps. Now, as you can see, the pumps are going to respond to the CPU temperature according to this graph for the performance pumps curve. But that's only the pumps, right? Let's say I want my fans to respond to the GPU temperature. Now, my GPU core is sitting at 46 degrees. I'd like to have a little quiet environment while my GPU is still kind of chilling. So we map that to the silent curve and then I can drag this end and take that straight to all of my fans. That's going to map it to every single fan quickly and easily, just like that. And so now my pumps are responding to my CPU temperature, whereas my fans are responding to the overall temperature of my GPU. All of this is automatically going to get managed as long as Nexus is running in the background. Now, for cases where Nexus isn't running, you might say, how do I control the performance of the thick Q60? For that, we want to hop into the settings widget. As you can see under the Q60 section, there's a different tab up here called curves. So if you click on that, it's actually going to let you toggle between what is controlling your pump and fan speeds. By default, Nexus is going to take control. However, if you toggle on firmware control, it's going to let you enable three distinct points on the curve that can be saved directly to the Q60. So anytime Nexus isn't running and it's in firmware mode, it's going to respond to the coolant temperature and ramp the pump and fan speeds according to the curve you have just set. Also, you have the option for motherboard control. So let's say you plug this into your motherboard header and you want to use your motherboard software or your BIOS to control the pump speeds and fan speeds. That's also an option you can do. But for the optimal experience, we do recommend using Nexus to control your entire system's cooling directly. Next, we're going to take a look at our newly introduced system widget within Nexus. So let's go ahead and click on the system widget to get started here. It's going to ask if you have a height case or if you have a non-height case. I have a Y70 Touch, so I'm going to select that hit next. It's going to ask for the color of the case. I'm using the Panda version, so let's just continue there. Next, it's going to ask you to name your PC. Windows will either automatically set a name or, if you've already customized that, it's going to show up here. You can change it to whatever you'd like. Go and click Finish, and here I now have a quick view of my entire system. It's going to show me the case I have, the operating system, my CPU, GPU, the amount of RAM I have installed, all of my SSDs, and it's also going to show me health statistics for my CPU temperature, my liquid temperature, my fan health for the Q60, as well as additional AI insights that will cycle through here. I can also take a look at different fan groups I have installed in my system, such as my thick FP12 fans. It's going to give me detailed statistics regarding the temp sensors in that area, the PWM signal percentage, the actual fan RPM, which it corresponds to, as well as the position sensing as to whether it's mounted as intake or exhaust. I can also interact with the Q60 here. So now it's going to pull up my CPU temperature, my liquid temp, my fan health. It's also going to show me my serial number, and this is going to be really nice for support because you can actually click on this and it's automatically going to copy your serial 
serial number to your clipboard. That way, if you're talking with our support and need assistance, you can easily paste that in. It's also going to show you the activation date that this cooler was registered and an active countdown for the remaining warranty period. So as you can see, the active period still remaining here is almost six years. Additional stats include their harmonic pump one and two information, such as the RPM, their set of inlet temperatures, which is the temperature coming into the cooler, as well as the outlet temperatures, which is the temperature going out of the cooler. It's also going to show all thick FP12 fans connected to the radiator itself in their own separate groups. If you have any more questions, go ahead and join our Discord or go to Hype.com for more information.